بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ یو آر فائن اینڈ مس بی گڈ ود یور اسٹڈی اینڈ انجوائنگ ود گڈ ہیلتھ دس از آر ٹینتھ لیکچر اینڈ آئی ہیو ڈلیورڈ اباؤٹ تھری لیکچرز اباؤٹ دیٹ لینئر پروگرامنگ اینڈ پرٹیکولرلی اباؤٹ دیٹ گرافیکل میتھڈ آف سالونگ دی لینئر پروگرامنگ پرابلمس ٹوڈے ول بی آر لاسٹ لیکچر فار دس پرٹیکولر ٹاپک and uh, thereafter we will discuss some other methods of uh, uh, using that linear programming method but class uh, in the last lecture we discussed about the different problems uh, and we uh, analyzed them and finally we solved them in order to find the optimum solution uh, in the particular operation settings so you must know about the uh, importance of that uh, program that how we can achieve the primary objectives of the organization that is the profit maximization or the uh, cost minimization so important is the topic of uh, linear programming and uh, you must be well aware of uh, that how we can uh, draw that objective function and how we can uh, convert the different constraints or limitations in the organizational settings in the form of equations or the inequalities and finally how we can uh, draw those constraints in the form of graph in order to find the corner points we discussed two very important topics that is uh, the iso profit line method or the iso cost line method in case of uh, minimization and the corner point method that how we can find out the uh, corner points uh, in these sort of uh, problems to find out the optimum solution so there is no uh, other solution uh, sometimes feasible other than uh, we find uh, this uh, through this particular method so this is the importance of linear programming it always helps us to uh, take particular decisions and in order to solve the particular problems which can be faced by the uh, managers in the organizational settings so it is very important for you people to uh, do particular practice uh, for these uh, questions from your textbook i have already recommended you uh, two textbooks one uh, is the operations management by hazer and the other one is uh, written by ted taha so you can find some good problems uh, related to linear programming in these uh, two books and you should always solve uh, the related problems to have a uh, good practice about these uh, problems about the graphical method of solving the linear programming techniques today uh, again as i said this will be our la uh, last lecture for this uh, particular topic that is the graphical method of uh, linear programming and again we will discuss some important problems so you should have the idea and uh, you should be uh, well aware that how we can uh, draw the different lines in order to find the optimal solution today we'll also discuss if there are more than uh, two to three lines like four lines we'll have to draw on uh, that graph and again the method is same again we will use that uh, corner point method or the iso profit line method to find out that optimal uh, point or and to maximize the objective function of the organization again that is the maximization of the profit or minimization of cost let's start uh, our two days lecture uh, with a very uh, simple example the galaxy industry production this uh, example is about the galaxy industry production who is uh, manufacturing two toy models that is space ray and zephyr so these are the two products uh, which that particular company is producing the resources are limited to so again these are these are our constraints that is 1200 pounds of special plastic available for the manufacturing of these uh, two products and again 40 hours of production time per week the total production time available for galaxy industry production for the production of these two products space ray and zephyr is 40 hours so of course we cannot uh, work beyond that uh, uh, time limit so this is uh, one of the constraint related to the production time again you know that uh, there may be the different uh, requirements on the part of the different uh, departments one of the marketing requirement in this particular topic is that total production cannot exceed 800 dozens 
So again, we cannot uh, uh, have the production more than 800 dozen units. In this particular case, we are taking that uh, production unit in dozens. It is very important class sometimes to uh, be very careful about the uh, units of measurement because we, we should always have homogeneous units of measurement uh, if we are uh, formulating and uh, identifying the different constraints. So keep in mind the units of measurement in case of uh, profits as well as in case of constraints. The next requirement, marketing requirement is that number of dozens of space rays cannot exceed number of dozens of zappers by more than 450. Now class, again, this is a very important uh, constraint and uh, we just uh, have read out the two very important constraints and again, if we uh, consider this particular example and uh, again, we'll have to decide about the decision variables. Now suppose there are two decision variables, that is the x1 and x2. x1 is relating to the production of space ray and uh, x2 is related to the production of zapper. So we have supposed that uh, we are producing x1 units of space ray and x2 units of zapper so that our profit will be maximized. And of course, we'll have to find the value of these unknown uh, decision variables, that is x1 and x2. Now class, Total production cannot exceed 800 dozens. It means one of our constraint will be what? That will be x plus y or x1 plus x2. If we consider uh, those uh, decision variables as x1 and x2, then x1 plus x2 should be less than or equal to 800 dozens. So that is our uh, production related constraint. Okay, the other constraint again, we cannot exceed the production of space rays by more than 450. Now, um, uh, what is uh, this constraint about? That it can be represented in the form of inequality, like x1 is less than equal to x2 plus 450. Now, that is the constraint. Again, please uh, note down, students. x1 is less than equal to x2 plus 450. Now, this is the constraint about this uh, particular uh, ma marketing uh, requirement. Now, again, if we say that it is uh, x1 less than or equal to x2 plus 450, we can again take x2 on the other side of the inequality and we can have the final constraint as x1 minus x2 less than or equal to 450. So, this is uh, about this particular constraint. Then there are some constraints about the technological inputs, that is space rays requires 2 pounds of plastic and 3 minutes of labor per dozen. The other requirement is zappers requires 1 pound of plastic and 4 minutes of labor per dozen. Again, we have one of the constraints relati uh, relating to that uh, special plastic, that we cannot use uh, special plastic more than 1200 pounds. So, if space rays takes two pounds of plastic and zapper takes one pound of plastic, so our uh, next constraint is 2x1 plus x2 should be less than or equal to 1200 pounds. That is the constraint about plastic. The next constraint is about uh, hours of production. Now again, if space rays takes three minutes of labor per dozen, and zappers takes four minutes of labor per dozen, then again, we have the constraint as 40 hours. Now again, uh, uh, students, this is a very important point here, that we have, uh, uh, we are given the uh, constraints related to that production time in minutes. That is the minute is the uh, unit given in the constraints. But in this uh, uh, particular example, the total capacity is given in the form of hours, that is the 40 hours. So we'll have to convert these hours into minutes to have the homogeneous units in case of the constraints as well as in the, in the case of maximum um, available production hours. So again, class, this is a very important point to note here that we'll have to convert these 40 hours into minutes. So if we multiply these 40 hours by 60, we can convert into the minutes. So 40, 40 hours means there are 2400 uh, minutes available for the production time per week. So what we'll do, we will convert these production hours into the homogeneous units, that is minutes. So this will be uh, related to our uh, uh, fourth constraint in this case. 
So, so there are four constraints in this particular example. Now, current production plan calls for producing as much as possible of the more profitable product. Space ray, eight dollar profit per dozen. Use resources left, left over to produce zippers, five dollar profit per dozen. So this information is related to our objective function. So what will be our objective function equation? That will be equal to Z. If we uh, represent that uh, objective function by Z, then that Z will be equal to 8x1 plus 5x2. So th this is uh, our uh, objective function. The current production plan consists of, OK class, we have discussed uh, 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 in the previous lectures that there are two types of decision making. One decision is based on the uh, perception or the intuition or the uh, observation of the managers, but that may or may not work. The most important decision is that decision which is always taken on the basis of certain facts and calculations. So again, in this particular case, the space, uh, there's a production plan before that operation manager that he should produce uh, 100 dozens of zapper and 550 dozens of space rays so that he can earn $4,900 per week. So this is the uh, production plan uh, in the mind of uh, uh, managers. But again, uh, uh, we will check out uh, with our uh, linear programming technique that whether this production uh, or this production plan will give you the optimum solution or not. So that is very important because this production plan at this point of uh, uh, stage is just on the basis, maybe just on the basis of uh, observations. So class, a linear programming model can provide an intelligent solution to this problem. So in this particular case, we uh, should not rely on that particular observation made by production manager, but we should rely, rely some uh, good technique like linear programming technique in order to find the optimum solution uh, for the production of these uh, two particular products so that we are able to maximize our profit. So class, there are two decision variables again in this particular case as uh, we've already uh, discussed that x1 is equal to the production level of space rays in dozens per week and x2 is equal to production level of zippers in dozens per weeks and our objective function is weekly profit to be maxim maximized. So we'll have to maximize our weekly profit and our objective function in this particular case as uh, we discussed is 8x1 plus 5x2, that is the objective function um, uh, for this particular example. And we are having uh, four constraints. Uh, the constraint, as we discussed, relating to that plastic uh, material is 2x1 minus x2 is less than or equal to 1200. The next constraint is related to the production time available, that is 3x1 plus 4x2 should be less than or equal to 2400. Again, for this production time, we have converted that total capacity uh, into the minutes. So that is important. Then the next uh, constraint is related to the total production. That is x1 plus x2 should be less than or equal to 800. Then there is another constraint uh, which we discussed is x1 minus x2 is less than or equal to 450. So these are the four constraints and we'll have to maximize the objective function by fulfilling all of these limitations or uh, constraints. Again, x i is greater than or equal to zero means if j uh, i is equal to or j is equal to one two, then it means x one and x two is greater than or equal to zero. These are our non-negative constraints. It means that x one and x two cannot be in negative. These should always be equal to post zero, or uh, this should be uh, greater than zero. So the set of all the points that satisfy all the constraints of the model is called feasible region. So again, you have already practiced that uh, first of all, we'll have to find out uh, what is the feasible, feasible region uh, uh, in the uh, problems uh, by using that linear programming method. So using a graphical representation, we can represent all the constraints, the objective function and the three types of feasible points. Now again, class, let's start uh, uh, drawing those uh, particular lines uh, on the graph. Now again, we have taken that uh, x axis, the pro x1 on the x axis and x2 on y axis. And uh, this is our first line equation. 
that is related to the plastic constant that is 2x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 1200. Now, as you already know that uh, how we will draw this line that is we will put first x1 is equal to 0 we will get the value of x2 and then we will put x2 is equal to 0 and we will get the value of x1. So, we will got the two points on uh, x axis and the y axis we will connect these points and then finally, we will have uh, this sort of equation uh, in the form represented by that uh, straight line. So, as we are concerned with less than equal to constant. So, this is the particular area which is feasible for this particular line. Suppose, we are uh, at this point of time we are only consider this uh, line. So, this is the feasible area for this line that is the less than area uh, for this line. Now, if we draw the second line that is the production time constraint. So, for this particular line the second line all of the area below that particular line will be the feasible area for the second line, but actually uh, we are interested in the area which is less than for both of these lines. So, this will this will be again the common area which is less than both of th uh, these two uh, lines. Then again there are two more constraints we will have to draw on this graph paper. This is the third constraint related to the total production constraint that is x 1 plus x 2 is less than or equal to 800. So, again we draw that line and again the feasible area this one is the feasible area which is less than for all of these three lines. Now, this is the last constraint related to that production mix constraint that is x 1 minus x 2 is less than or equal to 450. So, class you have seen that uh, we, uh, we were having four different constraints uh, in this particular problem and uh, we find out the feasible region for uh, all of these uh, four uh, constraints represented by the straight lines on this particular graph. So, this is our feasible region. Now, now we are interested uh, we have find out that feasible region for our particular problem, but we are interested in the solution which will give us the uh, optimal achievement of that objective function. So, let us consider this feasible area uh, we have uh, just uh, computed this is again our feasible region and uh, again if you consider that uh, ISO profit uh, line method in order to find the optimal point on this feasible region then you have uh, uh, known that we will put uh, profit uh, equal to any of the arbitrary value. We will take profit equal to any arbitrary value, so that we can have the profit line within that feasible region. So, in this particular case if we take that profit is equal to 2000, so we will have uh, get this particular line. So, again in the profit function we will put that profit function equal to 2000, then by putting x 1 is equal to 0 and then x 2 is equal to 0 we will have the two points and we can draw this profit line which is within the feasible region. Then again if we increase that profit up to uh, 3000 we will have another point up to 4000 we will have uh, another uh, uh, parallel profit line again within that particular region. So, if we are going to increase that uh, um, uh, profit by a particular amount we will get the these sort of parallel lines and finally, we will get the line which touches the last peak point of our feasible region. So, this particular point is actually our uh, optimal point because the, uh, the outermost profit line touches the outermost feasible area at this particular point. And if we find out the values of uh, x 1 and x 2 on this per, uh, particular point we will get that uh, the profit is equal to 5040 dollar. So, this is actually our maximum profit uh, at this particular point. Let us have a uh, more clear view of that feasible region. Now, this is our feasible region and if we represent this particular point at here so that we can have a more clear view and we will move these profit lines away from the origin. And finally, if the profit line goes away from the feasible region, so we are not interested in uh, uh, that particular profit line which is away uh, 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 that particular uh, feasible region. So, this is the right profit line which touches the last uh, point on that uh, feasible region. 
So class, again if we point out the corner points, this um, the method we just have discussed was related to the ISO profit line uh, method and we can always use the other method like uh, the corner point method in which we identify the different uh, corners um, on this particular graph. In this particular case our corner points will be 0 or O that is the origin which have the coordinates 0, 0. The other point is A whose coordinates are 0, 600. This is the particular point of uh, relating to that uh, uh, corner point and this is the other point B whose coordinates are 480, 240 which are not uh, yet known but we will uh, calculate this particular point by the intersection of the respective lines and this is another point D which is the corner point uh, within that feasible region. So our feasible region is O, A, B, C and D. So what we will do, we will again uh, first of all find out the points of intersection of the respective lines in order to calculate the coordinates of B and C and then finally we will uh, prepare a table uh, for the different alternatives that uh, by the different combinations of the, uh, of the two products x1 and x2 how we can maximize our profit. So let's this particular point this particular point is the intersection of these two lines that is a production time constraint and the production mix constraint that is 2x1 plus x2 is equal to 1200 and x1 minus x2 is equal to 450 and now you people uh, know that how to solve this uh, particular equation by using that simultaneous method of solving equations. We will make uh, equal uh, any of the coefficients for any variable either for x1 or x2 by multiplying a particular equation by a particular constant number. So then we will subtract these numbers and finally we can get the two points in this particular case as x1 is equal to 550 and x2 is equal to 100. So this point of intersection is 550 and 100. In the similar fashion we will uh, calculate the other point as well. Uh, that is the point B and C and finally we will put all of these points uh, in this particular uh, table and finally we can calculate our objective function by putting these values in this uh, objective function. So you can see from this particular example that at this particular point that is 480, 240 our profit is 5040 which is maximized and if we compare this particular solution with this initial solution which was suggested by the production or the marketing manager this is much better th than that of the uh, uh, initial proposal made by the uh, marketing manager. So you know that uh, uh, by using that linear programming uh, how we can maximize our profit and how we can optimally utilize our uh, resources uh, in order to achieve our primary objectives. So the profit uh, will be maximized by producing space rays is equal to 480 dozens and zappers is equal to 240 dozens. There is no other uh, uh, alternative uh, production level uh, in this particular case through which we can maximize our profit. So this is the strength of that uh, linear programming method. Class, let's discuss another illustration again relating to that uh, linear programming method. A manager must decide on the mix of products to produce for the coming week. Now class again uh, as we have already discussed that as a first step for uh, solving these uh, linear programming problems first of all we will have to analyze uh, a particular situation and again uh, I have told you that sometimes uh, we said that if you rightly analyze the problem and you are able to find that what is actually the problem then half of the problem is actually solved. So important is the analysis of a particular problem. So again let's discuss that a manager must decide on the mix of products to produce for the coming week. Product A requires 3 minutes per unit for molding. So that is the uh, again um, a requirement on the part of that product A. Then 2 minutes per unit for painting and 1 minute for packaging. Then product B requires 2 minutes per unit for mold, uh, molding, 4 minutes per painting, 4 minutes for painting and 3 minutes uh, per unit for uh, packing. 
So again, class, as we uh, read out this particular situation, uh, to find out that there are three particular constraints in this particular example, one constraint uh, is related to that molding, the other constraint is related to that painting, and the next constraint is related to packaging. Now, there will be 600 minutes available for molding. Now, this is the maximum uh, capacity time available for these uh, particular uh, uh, options, that is the molding and packaging and painting. So, there will be 600 minutes available for molding, 600 minutes for painting and 420 minutes for packaging. So, it means that we cannot do the uh, molding work more than 600 minutes and the same is true for the other constraints. Both products have contributions of dollar 1.5 per unit. It means that if you are producing one unit of product A, it will give us the profit of 1.5 dollar. Again, if we produce one unit of product B, it will again give us the profit of uh, 1.5 dollar. So, this um, helps us to, uh, uh, to formulate our objective function. Now, what are the requirements? Algebraically or graphically, state the objective and constraints of this problem, plot the constraints on the grid, and identify the feasible region, maximize the objective function. So, again, in this particular example, what we want to do, we want to maximize our uh, objective function. Now, class, again, if we convert uh, that particular statement in the form of the table uh, by supposing that uh, x1 is equal to the products A produced and x2 is equal to the products B produced, we'll have this sort of table. Uh, again, product A requires 3 minutes of molding and product B requires 2 minutes of molding and total molding time available or the total molding time capacity is 600 minutes. So, again, this is relates to our first of the constraint relating to uh, that molding part. Again, the second constraint is related to painting that is 2 minutes are uh, being taken by the product A in case of that painting and 4 minutes are being taken by the product B and the total painting times available are 600 minutes. Again, in case of packaging, product A takes uh, 1 minute, product B takes 3 minutes and the total packaging time is uh, available is 420 minutes and this is the profit that uh, if you produce one unit of product A, uh, we will get the 1.5 dollar profit and if we produce one, one unit of product B, we will get the profit equal to 1.5 dollar. So, this uh, is the table which represents the whole of the situation uh, in this particular illustration. Now, class again, we will use uh, that graphical method uh, uh, to state our objectives and then to convert our constraints in first into the different inequalities. So, again our objective function is 1.5 x1 plus 1.5 x2 subject to the different constraints. What are the different constraints inequalities? That is 3 x1 plus 2 x2 less than equal to 600. So, this is uh, related to our molding constraint. The next one is 2 x1 plus 4 x2 less than equal to 600. So, again this constraint is related to that uh, particular paintings. The third constraint is x1 plus 3 x2 less than equal to 420. That is the packaging constraint. So, these uh, three constraints are represented uh, by equation 1, 2 and 3 in this particular uh, example and again x1 and x2 uh, cannot be uh, negative. Uh, so, these are our known uh, negativity constraints. Now, again class, just remind the method of uh, solving uh, these problems. You know, first of all, we will have to draw uh, uh, these lines uh, on the graphs, which represents actually the constraints available in this particular situation. So, first of all, let us uh, find out the two particular points uh, for this constraint that is 3 x1 plus 2 x2 is equal to 600. First, we will put again x1 is equal to 0, we will get x2 is equal to 300. So, we will get one of the point uh, 0 300 which is actually the y intercept. So, this is the point at which this particular line will uh, intersect the y axis. Again, we will put then 
x2 is equal to 0, we will get the value of x1 as 200. So, we will get a point as 200 and 0, that is the x-intercept, that is the point at which this particular line will intersect the uh, x-axis. In the similar fashion, we will find out the two points uh, for the other two constraints. We will convert that inequality into the equality and we will put again x1 is equal to 0, we will get x2 equal to 150. So, this is the point and again if we put x2 is equal to 0, we will get x1 is equal to 300. This is the second point. Again, these uh, points uh, represents the uh, y-intercept and the x-intercept for this particular constraint which is now represented in the form of equation. Let us take the uh, example of third constraint that is x1 plus 3 x2 is equal to 420. So, we will put x1 is equal to 0, we will get x2 is equal to 140 which is the y-intercept and again we will put x2 is equal to 0, we will get the value of x1 equal to 420. So, this is the second point and again if we, uh, so class we got the uh, two points for uh, all of these three equations. And now in the uh, next step, uh, if we use that uh, ISO profit line solution method, so you already know that we will uh, put that objective function equal to any of the arbitrary value. In this particular case, let us uh, we take that arbitrary value equal to 150. Now again, you can take any other value other than 150, but that profit line should lie initially uh, within the feasible region. So, that is important. So, in this particular case, we take uh, that uh, uh, profit value equal to 150. If you put again uh, this value 150 in this objective function, we will get the objective function as 1.5x1 plus 1.5x2 is equal to 150. So, this is the arbitrary value for uh, we have taken for drawing that ISO profit line. So, we will put x1 is equal to 0 and we will get the value of x2 is equal to 100. So, this is the point on uh, y axis that is 0, 100. Again, in this e uh, profit equation, we will put x2 is equal to 0, we will get uh, x1 is equal to 100. So, this is the x intercept. Now, class again, we will have to draw all that uh, constraints uh, on the graph and then we will have to put that profit line. Uh, on the graph to find out uh, the optimal point. Now, again, this is the x axis, this is the y axis and you have taken any suitable and convenient scale on both x axis as well as y axis and first of all, we will draw the first line. So, this is our first line equation that is 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 less than equal to 600. Now, because we are interested in that constraint of uh, less than equal to, so our feasible region will be uh, less than of this line. If we consider only this particular line, our feasible region will be this one, that is the less than region uh, of that particular line. Now, in the next step, we will uh, draw that uh, second line, which is actually the pain painting constraint. And uh, again, the feasible region for this particular line will be less than area. And this one is the area which is uh, feasible uh, for both of these two lines. Now, this is the third constraint that is x1 plus 3x2 less than equal to 420, which is the packing constraint. And again, this is the area which is less than uh, all of these three lines. So, this is our final feasible region. Now, in the next step, we will have to put that profit uh, line, which we have just computed on this graph. Now, this is the profit line, where the x1 and x2 will be equal to uh, 100, which have, uh, we have just computed. And again class, if we point out the different corner points in this particular graph, these are the three, rather four corner points in this particular case. So again, the optimum solution can be found on corners and uh, it is just said by that corner uh, point method that we will always be able to find our optimum solution at any of the corner points. So, again, if we use that uh, ISO profit uh, line method, what we will do? We will uh, draw or move that profit line away from the origin until it touches the last point of that feasible region by putting or by taking the different arbitrary values. So, this is the particular point 
where that profit line uh, touches if we move further uh, this profit line then it will go beyond the uh, feasible region which is not uh, actually the uh, point of calculation in this particular case so this is the um, optimal point in this particular case again class what are the different uh, uh, corner points one is the origin again where x and y axis is equal to 0 the other corner point is a the next corner point is b third corner point is c and the last corner point is d so our profit will be maximized at any of these corner points which we have already actually identified through that uh, iso profit uh, line method uh, which touches uh, at the point c so now we will calculate the uh, coordinates of these uh, points of intersection by solving the respective equations and uh, one of the corner point B is the intersection of following two lines so we will solve these following two lines and uh, you already know that how to solve these uh, equations simultaneously that is we will multiply uh, any of the equation by a particular number so that we can equate the coefficients of any of the decision variable and then thereafter we can subtract these equations to find the value of the other decision variable so if we solve these two particular equations uh, we will get the value of x2 is equal to 120 and again if you put the value of x2 equal to 120 in any of these two equations we will get the value of x1 and so we uh, find the coordinates of uh, point B as 60 and 120 in the same fashion we will solve uh, uh, for the other corner point C that is the intersection of these two particular lines that is 3x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 600 and 2x1 plus 4x2 is less than or equal to 600 again we will equate the coefficients of any of the decision variable by multiplying uh, by particular number to either one equation or sometimes it may be required to multiply uh, both of these equations but we'll have to equate actually the uh, coefficients of bo both of these equations for any of the decision variable so again if we solve uh, these two equations by that simultaneous method we will get the value of x1 is equal to 150 again by putting the value of x1 in this equation we can uh, get the value of x2 is equal to 75 so these are the coordinates of the second point C that is 150 and 75 now class we have the coordinates of all of the uh, uh, particular corner points we were having four corner points in this case that is O, A, B, C and D the coordinates of uh, O, A and D were already known and by using the simultaneous equation method we just computed the values of the coordinates for the point B and the point C now this is uh, our profit uh, function that is z is equal to 1.5 x1 plus 1.5 x2 now what we will do we will put uh, these values of x1 and x2 one by one in this particular profit equation so we can get the different alternatives again if we put the coordinates uh, 0 0 in this uh, profit equation we will get the profit equal to 0 so that is the uh, arbitrary point and we are actually not interested in that particular point the next point is the A where x coordinate is 0 y coordinate is 140 and we will put these values in this particular uh, profit equation we will get the profit equal to 210 again what is meant by this uh, particular alternative it shows us that if we, produ if we do not produce uh, the product x1 and if we only produce product uh, x2 and exactly the 140 units of x2 then we will get the profit equal to 210 again at the point B if we produce 60 units of product A and 120 units of product B we will get the profit equal to 270 point C if we produce 150 units for product A and 75 units for product B we will get the profit equal to 337.5 and again at the point D if we produce 200 units of product A and we don't produce for uh, product B then we will get the profit equal to 300 again what is the uh, maximum profit that is 337.5 which can be achieved by producing 
150 units of product A and 75 units of product B. So this is our uh, maximum uh, profit available by using the uh, respective uh, alternative of production. Let's take another example. A company wants to produce at most 1800 units of a product. So class, in this particular uh, statement, again, we have a sort of constraint. That is, a, com a company cannot purchase more than 800 units of a product. There are two types of the product, M1 and M2, available. That is, M1 occupies two foot cube. It costs rupees four and the company makes the profit of rupees 3. M2 occupies 3 foot cube, cost rupees 5, and the company makes the profit of rupees 4. If the budget is rupees 5500 and the warehouse has 3000 feet cube for the uh, products, now what is being required? Formulate the problem as linear programming problem. So again, we'll have to find the optimum solution. We'll have to maximize our uh, profit uh, function uh, in this particular example again. So class, let's uh, uh, have a view on this particular example. First constraint is represented by 800 units of a product. That is, they will have to purchase at most 1800 units of a product. So this is the first constraint. Then uh, the other constraints are represented by that uh, foot cube. That is, it, uh, what actually space a particular uh, product takes. That is being represented by a unit of that uh, feet cube. Then the cost dimension is given for the different products. Again, we'll have to uh, produce the products within that cost uh, limitation. And again, the company makes the profit of rupees three uh, for the product M1 and makes the profit of rupees uh, four for the product M2. So these two values represent our uh, objective function. So again, after analyzing the situation, we have the idea that uh, we have some profit maximization function and we are interested to maximize the profit function, then there are some constraints. And uh, of course, we'll have to represent these constraints in the form of inequalities. Now again, if we put uh, that all um, uh, information available in that particular problem in the form of the graph, then it is always easy to formulate the profit function as well as to formulate the uh, equalities or inequalities for the different constraints available for a particular problem. So if we suppose that X1 is the total number of products M1 produced and X2 is the total number of products M2 produced, then again, the area limitation uh, is given as 3000. And of course, we cannot go beyond that limit of 3000. So in this particular case, our uh, uh, constraint inequality will be 2X1 plus 3X2 less than or equal to 3000. Then again, cost function, product M1 uh, takes 4 uh, rupees for producing and M2 takes three, uh, 5 rupees for producing and total resources available are 5,500 rupees. And of course, we'll have to represent this particular information in the form of inequality and that will be 4x1 plus 5x2 less than or equal to 5,500 and our profit function will be 3x1 plus 4x2, that will be our profit function. And uh, additionally, company wants to purchase at most condition, that is 800 units of a product. So this is another constraint that we cannot produce more than 1800 units of a product. So again, in this case, our decision variables are x1 and x2, and uh, our profit for uh, product m1 will be equal to 3x1 and our profit for product M2 will be equal to 4X2, and our profit function will be equal to 3X1 plus 4X2. Now let's formulate the constraints of the problem. For the area, the maximum availability is 3,000 feet cube, and area required for M1, which is represented by X1 uh, in this particular example, is two foot cube, where for the, whereas for the product M2, X2 is three foot cube. So the constraint becomes as under, that is two X1, plus 3x2 should be less than or equal to 3,000 uh, feet cube. And uh, that is actually the first constraint related to that area. Similarly, for the cost, the maximum availability is rupees 5,500. Product x1 required rupees 4 per unit, 
and product M2 represented by X2 required to be 5 per unit. So the constraint becomes as 4X1 plus 5X2 less than or equal to 5500. So this is our second constraint related to cost. Now there is another third uh, condition represented in the form of limitation of the constraint that is company wants to produce at most 1800 units of a product. This is the production constraint that the company must produce at most 1800 units of the product and the product is composed of X1 and X2. So this particular constraint may be represented. So this particular constraint may be represented uh, by the inequality as X1 plus X2 should be less than equal to 1800. So class this is the uh, another constraint uh, which is actually relating to that uh, production requirement. Again we will have to add non-negativity constraints or the restrictions the decision variables should be non-negative which can be expressed in mathematical form as under that is x1 x2 greater than equal to 0 because the values of x1 uh, or x2 cannot be in negative. We are actually talking about the quantity of the uh, product x1 and x2 and of course the quantity cannot be in negative. So this is our non-negativity constraint actually. So class this is the whole uh, analysis of uh, this particular situation that is the profit uh, maximization function is z is equal to 3x1 plus 4x2 subject to the three different constraints related to area, cost and product or production constraint. The first constraint related to area as we have just computed is 2x1 plus 3x2 should be less than or equal to 3000. The second uh, particular constraint related to cost is 4x1 plus 5x2 that is less than or equal to 5500 and third particular constraint is related to that production constraint that is x1 plus x2 should be less than or equal to 1800. So these are the three uh, different constraints. Again class uh, I will not uh, solve this particular example and I will leave this uh, example for you people. Uh, first of all again you should have to uh, draw the graph. Uh, you will have to draw the particular lines for these three particular constraints related to area related to cost, related to 1800, you will have to find then uh, the feasible region which will satisfy all of the three uh, constraints. Then again you may use the ISO profit line method. You will have to draw that uh, profit line on that uh, feasible region in order to take or by taking any of the arbitrary value for that profit function. We have already uh, practiced uh, for these uh, similar problems and again in this maximization problem we will try to uh, move away that profit line that is moving away from the origin and finally the point at which that uh, profit line will touch is the outermost area of the feasible region that will be our optimal point at which uh, our profit will be maximized. Again you will have to identify and you will have to use that uh, corner point method to identify the different corners and again as the corner point said that our profit will only be maximized at the corner points and then that of course uh, will include one of the point which we have just identified uh, through that ISO profit line method. So after identifying those uh, corner points you will have to uh, find out the intersection points uh, by solving the relevant equations. So then you will be able to find the final alternative table in which you will compute the different uh, alternatives available uh, for this uh, production plan and finally you will be able to find out that by using what level of production level for the two different products X1 and X2 we can maximize our profit. So class this is the uh, example I am leaving for you. I have, al I have already computed uh, the profit function, uh, the different uh, constraints converted in the form of inequalities. So I do not think that it is very difficult to solve this particular uh, example. Uh, so just uh, have a practice uh, in this um, particular example. 
So class, uh, this was our fourth lecture uh, for this particular topic that is the graphical method of linear programming. As this is a very important topic, so I spent uh, uh, as uh, much as four lectures for this particular topic. We have uh, done about nine to ten or more problems uh, relating to the linear programming by using that graphical method. Now, you people should uh, further uh, practice the different other problems again from your textbook, from the internet, or some other books in which uh, some problems related to the linear programming methods are given. So after practicing, you should be uh, able to solve any of the problem uh, relating to that production plans or relating to any other situation which is related to that uh, linear programming situation by using that graphical methods. But again, there are also some assumptions in which we cannot use the graphical method. Uh, uh, most importantly, if there are more than uh, four to five or six equations, then it is very difficult to draw the graphs for the each and every line. And uh, sometimes we use some other methods for uh, solving these sort of linear programming problems. And that method is generally referred as simplex method. So in the next coming classes, uh, we will discuss another method of linear programming uh, which is called as simplex method and uh, again these are sort of iteration method and uh, uses some step by step procedure in order to solve the similar problems. So from the next class uh, onward we will discuss uh, this particular method of simplex method but I hope from you people that uh, in this particular uh, week uh, you should take the similar examples. First you, will, uh, you should solve uh, again all the problems which we have just discussed uh, in three to four uh, lectures, then you should um, solve some other related problems from the, from the different tags so that you have uh, the expertise in solving that uh, uh, problems by using the graphical method. So class, this is, our, uh, this is the end of our lecture and uh, I hope uh, you got uh, this particular method of graphical uh, technique of uh, linear programming. Uh, okay, take care and good luck. Stay blessed. The office.